Any on-screen element that someone can touch to perform an action on your app should be large enough for reliable interaction. In general, you should ensure that interactive elements have a width and height of at least 48 dp. And in this video, you'll learn about a few ways in which you can make this happen. So why are touch targets important? For users with limited touch, physical strength, or mobility, small touch targets may be difficult to interact with. Even users with perfect touch may struggle to easily use such controls if their touch precision is temporarily impaired, for example, when they are walking or riding a bus. So what are your options for ensuring that touch targets are adequate? You can use an Android min width and an Android min height to set lower bounds on a view's dimensions. Or you can add padding. Or to retain the original size of a view while expanding its touchable region, you can use a touch delegate, which allows a parent layout to handle touch events on behalf of the descendant view. Okay, let's make all this concrete with an actual example. Consider this 24 dp by 24 dp image button, which is not considered large enough for reliable interaction. So first, how do you test this? How do you discover that the touch target isn't actually adequate? Android's automated testing tools can help and they can help you detect small touch targets. Consider using Accessibility Scanner for Android for manually testing your app on your device. If you run Accessibility Scanner on the screen which has this button, it will recommend you fix the touch target. And if you're running Android Studio 3.1, Arctic Fox, or higher, the Issues panel will also flag the too small touch target. So pay attention to those warnings. For automated tests, you can also turn on accessibility checking in Espresso and Rove Electric, and we will cover that in a separate video later in this series. Okay, let's get into Android Studio and try to make this image button more accessible. Approach one, you can add an Android min width and an Android min height of 48 dps or greater. And when you do this, both the scanner and studio warnings will disappear. This may make the icon larger, so let's try approach two, because maybe you want to keep the icon small, in this case, 24 dp by 24 dp, but you want to expand the touchable area of the icon. So you can now add padding. In this case, if you add a 12 dp padding on each side, you can attain a touchable area of 48 dp by 48 dp. One useful resource when working with padding is to visualize the layout bounds of your views. Go into developer options, on your phone and turn on Show Layout Bounds. With that option turned on, you can see exactly how each view on the screen is laid out. Here's how a 24 dp by 24 dp icon looks with layout bounds enabled and no padding added. And here's how the same icon looks with 12 dp padding on all sides. The icon now has a bigger touchable area that meets the minimum recommendations for touchable elements. Now let's try approach three you can use the Touch Delegate API. When you use this API, you redefine the hit rect of a view, and you expand out the touchable area for that view beyond its actual bounds. Note that Accessibility Scanner can detect and account for the use of Touch Delegate only when running on Android 10 or higher. On earlier Android versions, Touch Target size results may appear even when this API is used to enlarge touch targets to an appropriate size. As usual, when accessibility is involved, you can help yourself by following best practices at the design stage. For example, as you consider making touch targets at least 48 dp by 48 dp, consider also separating them by 8 dp of space or more to ensure balanced information density and usability. Refer to the Material Design Accessibility Guidelines for recommendations related to touch targets and other accessibility issues. The link to these guidelines has been added to this video's description below. Okay, to summarize, you should strive to make all interactive elements at least 48 dp high and 48 dp wide. You can do this by setting an Android min width and an Android min height, or by adding padding or by installing a touch delegate. And you can use Android Studio's issue panel warnings and automated testing tools like Accessibility Scanner to detect small touch targets. 
Thanks for listening and stay tuned for more accessibility videos.